Right. Well, you talked earlier, you, know, you were just talking about elements of geology that really affect our daily lives, such mm -hmm. as debris flows and, uh, you know, fissures. Right. So we don't really talk about fissures. We all kind of know underground or, you know, underground water levels. We're, we're concerned about water. So why would fissures, first of all, what is a fissure? And why is this so important to us to know about these? You know, fissures are new. They've only been in existence since the late 1920s. It's not something that's been around for millions of years like a lot of other geologic phenomena. So say that to me again. The first earth fissure was discovered in Arizona in 1927. It's a, it's a natural hazard that's been produced because of man's involvement that we didn't have before. We are pumping the groundwater out of our basins so fast, faster than we naturally see over geologic times, that the basins are subsiding up to 15 feet in some cases, and it's creating cracks at the surface. The rocks are shrinking because they're drying out underground, and they're creating cracks underground that propagate to the surface. So we're now seeing in other states and other countries some of the same things that started out in Arizona because we overpumped some of our basins so much. And we've got, I believe, a slide that if perhaps we can see yeah. this and we, we can have a, a view of a fissure. Well, the first f way a fissure forms is a very narrow crack, and it may only be a few hundred feet long, but it starts out as a narrow crack, and then it captures water running across the surface, and as the water goes into it, it erodes it into a giant fissure gully, as we call it. And I think our next slide shows uh, one of the fissure gullies uh -huh. out in remote areas. So you can see these things can be tens of feet wide and tens of feet deep. How do you know that's not um, natural erosion, I suppose, as opposed to this fissure development? Um, the linearity of it and also how quickly they open. And they typically are, are crossing the natural drainage. They, in many cases, are perpendicular to the natural drainage, so they capture the water running in. But you've asked a very important question. And some of these older ones, it's almost impossible to tell the difference. And that's created problems because people building new homes go out there and think, oh, it's just an old wash, an old drainage. I'll fill it in, and we'll reroute the water, not realizing they're building on top of an earth fissure. And we've had that problem up in the Queen Creek area just recently. All right, in Queen Creek area, I believe we've got some maps or some other slides <coughs> showing this. So if we could see those, and then you can describe right. what we're looking okay. at. <coughs> well. Uh, this first slide is an aerial photograph taken in about 1997. And earth fissures have been around for a few decades, and they weren't a big problem because, uh, let's go to the next slide, and you'll see where the earth fissure is. The, the yellow should show up there mm -hmm. and highlight. That's the famous Y-shaped crack out in the Queen Creek area. And when it's out there and nobody's building around it, it's more of a geologic curiosity. But let's jump from 1997 to 2004. And if you take a look at what's happened in less than a 10-year space there with this next slide, you'll see all the development that's, that's oh, moved in yeah. there. And so people, not realizing what was going on, built on or right next to these. So in 2005, in our next slide, you'll see what happened overnight when heavy rains during the monsoon came in, they rolled down this very narrow crack, and literally overnight, by the next morning, the homeowners got up and half the yard had disappeared down this chasm. And that's a fence in the upper part that's fence just in the background gone. That's, that's collapsed yeah. in there. Fortunately, it didn't go under the house. They did uh, have a lot of their, their pipes, their water pipe, the gas pipe, and things like that went across there and were just hanging 10 feet in air. So, and I know we've got one more slide dealing with fissures yeah. also. Are, the, is the, are these unpredictable? Well, we can start to narrow them in because uh, they tend to form around the margins of the basins. So as we pump the water out of our groundwater basins, the center of the basin drops the most. Picture when you take a cake out of the oven and it starts to cool, the center of the cake may collapse and you get cracks around the rim. A lot of the cracks, the fissures we see, form around the rim of the basin the same way. Uh, our next slide is uh, a more recent one done this, uh, this past summer, and it's just a, a mile north of the one on the previous slide. And that's another fissure that opened up overnight in somebody's corral. A horse fell into the mud, and, oh. and after 30 hours of a rescue right. attempt, uh, the, the horse died from exertion. They oh, couldn't darn. get it out because the mud was so thick and the water pouring in, they just couldn't do anything about it. So what, do, uh, what is Arizona doing about this? And, and what are homeowners and home buyers, what can they do, homeowners, mm -hmm. home buyers, do to protect themselves? Well, the event in 2005 really galvanized attention in the governor's office and legislature, and they passed two bills. One now requires you to disclose when you're selling a property if there's an earth fissure on the property, or if you don't know, you have to say, I don't know, 
And that, that's a warning sign, and whoever's buying may want to take a look at that and do an investigation. The other thing was they funded our agency to go out and start mapping all of the earth fissures across the state. So for the last eight or nine months, we've had teams out there roaming around the countryside. Our first pass, we've identified somewhere around 300 fissures, and we're finding new ones all the time. Uh, our, we've got three areas we're just about finished the mapping on, and we're going to make those maps public, and they'll be online. You'll be able to go in and find very detailed maps. We're using high-precision GPS, so they'll be accurate within a couple of feet, and we'll systematically map all of them across the state. And so if you're going to buy a house, look at a piece of property, you'll be able to go here and find out if there's any fissures out there. Is there anything that can really be done once a fissure is opened? Yes. Uh, one of the things is you don't want to build on a fissure, so set back as far as you can. Um, if you've already got a house and there's a fissure nearby, you want to keep water away from it because what we found is the narrow fissure is only an inch wide and it's pretty static, but it's when water gets into it that can open these things up overnight to be 10 or 20 feet wide. So keep water away from it, and that's one thing people hadn't realized. And so people would have water coming off their roofs and running down the downspouts, go right into a fissure, and boom. boom. Instant growth, instant right. gi yes. gigantic, huh? Your, your yard disappears in a matter of right. hours.